It's Don here from the board. Thanks for coming along and checking out this video. So <clears throat> the previous part to this, I essentially broke the spindle holder on my CNC. However, I was really fortunate that I had people in the community who actually watched my video and said they'd done exactly the same thing where they'd cracked the nut holding portion where the bolt goes through because I'd over tighten it. It's just a 3D printed part. So it wasn't really structurally super strong. I don't know how hollow it is in regards to, you know, the infill percentage and so on and so forth. So I'd actually spoken to Banggood and they weren't able to do much about that to replace it for me. But because the community pulled through, they showed me their versions of what they did to fix the same issue. So the solution was, uh, you could either 3D print another one, which I do have a 3D printer, but it's not in the best of conditions and the calibrations and tolerances weren't great. Uh, so I sort of put that one off, but somebody else had said they used a stainless steel hose clamp, which made perfect sense to me. And the fact that I didn't even think about it, obviously, you know, I wasn't really thinking in the best space. So I took a bit of uh, string. It was literally just a bit of string and I wrapped it around the spindle block, marked it so I knew what size I needed to, and I went down to uh, the local hardware supply chain there, and I bought myself a stainless steel hose clamp. Now, I've got my camera set up a little bit differently because I've actually got the CNC on the side here today, and this is what it looks like with that hose clamp on. So it's a stainless steel hose clamp. Now, I've just put it on, I've tightened it quite a bit, and this is the size that I've used. It's a, it's going to focus. It's a 65 to 89 millimeter is what fits. The next size down, which had a maximum size of 70 millimeters, was actually too small. Didn't suit the requirement. So it's going to be somewhere between 70 to 90 millimeters is what you want. And there's a good amount of sort of length to actually tighten down with as well. So I put that on. You can see I've already got the ER11 uh, chuck on there, the collet and the chuck. And what I've done is I've actually put on the three mil bit from this Drill Pro set. So in the first part, I went through and I measured some of them and the tolerances weren't super duper great. But the one that I'm using right now is this purple one. It's the largest of all the bits that I actually have. And I figured it's probably going to be the strongest. So if I screw up badly here, it's not going to snap the bit. Whereas if I went with a lighter bit, it probably will. So I've actually got the bottom piece tied. Well, not tied, but clamped down using the standard clamps. Uh, and then I've used double sided stick tape to actually hold this top piece on top. Because what I want to be doing is doing a cutout that's going to go right through that 10 mil and then I've got this base piece which is kind of sacrificial to ensure that I'm not going to end up crashing the bit into the bed. Now you'll notice the actual height of the spindle here is also quite high but there is almost half of that depth inside it. Yes I realize that there is an inherent risk here that it's going to fly off and that's obviously a very big risk but because one I'm using plywood and two the feed rate is actually quite slow any amount of push to actually cause that to push up i'm not really expecting it to be too much of an issue and you'll notice i've also clamped it at the top of this bracket rather than in the middle or at the bottom so the pressure on this actual spindle is against where it needs to be so yes there are some uh, sort of not optimum behaviors that I've exhibited here in, in modifying and using this rig, but I do want to state that at the moment, nobody else is home. It's just me. So my, my family is not going to be impacted by this while it's running. And I'm going to switch over to the desktop now to show you what I've actually got in place. So let's go across. There we go. So I'm, I'm back in uh, easel from inventables. I've just drawn up a one U tester. That's all it is. And that's all that's happening there. I've set the actual bit as a three mil bit. That's the size of the block of wood. I've got some cut settings and I've already 
exported the um, oh that's not really what I wanted in any case one of these menus I can't remember which one it was um, I exported the actual G code for Gerbil <laughs> I do apologize for for not being the most well prepared and here it actually is so in theory I've already set up my zeroing which is where it's currently sitting which is here and this is the pathway for this three mil bit yes three mil is really big so these corners are potentially not going to fit a switch but that's okay i'm just testing the bits here i'm, I'm testing the collet and the chuck here the accuracy of what it's actually milling and whatnot will be against those factors as opposed to expecting a perfect one new tester being cut out of this plywood I've got 7,000 RPM because that's what the spindle is. It's a fixed rate. And hopefully the uh, actual settings here that is going to be provided. The, so the feed rate here is uh, 762, which is what uh, Easel actually uses for plywood. So hopefully that should be okay, especially with this large bit and a good amount of cutting speed. Right, yeah, so that should that should work. That should work. I hope, I hope, I hope. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna cut this section and then I'll start the record again without sound because this thing is noisy. I'll switch over to the actual camera that's watching this, and hopefully very shortly we'll end up with uh, a successful one U bit that is there, and if not, well I'll cry about it later and talk about what happened. See you soon. And we're back. Woo. Wow. So that was eight minutes exactly to do that cutting. Uh, I did notice that there was some sections as it was moving along in, in this sort of uh, Y plane that the bit was sort of catching and then there was like a skip. Now, because it's plywood, you're going to have good quality material on the top and then there's dubious layers of material in between. A lot of it's going to be chip material, um, recycled material and things like that. And there could be debris in there, which is causing that kind of thing. And also because I was cutting out tabs, so it's sort of for structural support and then you can sort of hand cut and remove them later. I've got wood carving tools, so I figured I'd just put in the tabs to make it easier. Uh, but overall, you know, it was noisy. It seems like it did the job and it cut perfectly fine. The collet and the chuck didn't explode so i'm still here i'm still safe nothing happened on screen otherwise it possibly would have been hey this is the last video that don ever did um type of thing and somebody else sharing it well it's still powered right now so what i'm going to do is i'm actually going to unplug the spindle there we go so the spindle is now not powered and turn off the actual controller because i'm feeding it through a transformer unplug the USB all right so covered all my bases to render it safe and now there's a lot of uh, sawdust there but let's see if I can I've done too good a job so I'm just gonna rack that over manually
Let's see if I can pry up that top piece. What have I got? <sighs> I'm being very silly because I can just remove this whole bottom piece, can't I? There we go. It's on quite tight. There we go. Now, my actual desktop normally is a bit of a mess because there's bits and pieces from setting all of this up, so I'm just going to keep operating off this piece over here. But, um, <clears throat> maybe maybe I'm going to just take that off because I don't want all that sawdust getting onto the actual threaded rod here because that's going to obviously cause issues later so you can tell I really thought this through So there it is there. Uh, go back to using my little tiny screwdriver here. There we go. I'm crazy. So you can see that's the double stick tape that I had used. And there's the actual cutout. It's a bit rough around the edges, but uh, a three mil bit will kind of do that it's it's still quite warm now i'd actually set it to cut to 11 mil but i think my starting position was a bit high because you can see it hasn't actually cut all the way through but that's okay um well you can see i can just i've just snapped off that that center bit there and going to use the screwdriver to clean up that middle bit there so you can see there's uh, sort of glue residues and things like that from the trunk that just broke off uh, but obviously that's that's a bit of my fault for not making sure that the plunge was sufficiently deep enough to go all the way through because I'd measured that at 10 mil, but my Z-axis starting point was probably a touch high for it to actually plunge all the way through. I probably should have set to say 12 mil or something of that nature. But if I get, I'm going to pull out my electronic uh, caliper. I'll just use my wife's uh, very simple plastic one. And let's see. So the internal size should be 14, is what I'd set, because I wanted it to be cut on the inside. And the focus isn't doing too well today, but it's reading just under 14 in both directions, about 13 and a half. So dimensional accuracy is kind of close, but not quite there. The outside is... 27 mil I don't even remember what I'd set it to and I'd already closed the window so I don't know what it's meant to be but of course the real test is can I shove a switch inside it possibly no so uh, whoa. it's close but it's pretty tight now if I clean that up a little bit with some wood carving tools, it almost, almost made it in there. Almost. <clears throat> so 13 and a half mil uh, is what it actually ended up with, with a three mil bit trying to cut the inside path. But I feel like if I actually punch that out and I get a file and I clean it up, um, that would actually work. So. <clears throat> 
you know, it's it's very hard to gauge the quality of the the drill bits, but you know, for what it is, for how much you actually pay for one of these, I think for simple materials like plywood, it certainly does the job. The collet <clears throat> and chuck holder is amazing because besides the fact that I actually made user error in setting up the actual CNC to get this happening. Once I actually installed it, it was really easy to use. The The big ass wrench that I've got somewhere in here, um, you know, I need a second one to hold the actual uh, chuck and then the, the tool, the wrench is great for tightening the collar on that, but it went on effortlessly and did the job. So what can I say right now? Uh, <clears throat> I'm, I'm pretty happy with the results for what it is. If I go down to the one and a half, I would expect that the accuracy of this is probably going to be a bit better. Noting that my CNC inherently has issues because if you're watching the time lapse of the eight minute for the cut, the Z, sorry, the X axis uh, stepper motor was doing its wobble. And so because of that, it's actually going to have dimensional accuracy issues as well since you're not going to be very accurate with the stepper motor movements when the feed screw is also moving up and down because it's slightly bent or warped. <clears throat> so at the end of the day, for a couple of hundred dollars, to have a desktop bench top uh, CNC and being able to get a good set of different sized bits, even though the accuracy of those are not great, you can always cut a little bit under or as I experienced, it will naturally cut a little bit under depending on your setup, then you can just hand finish them to get to the size that you want. For simple things, for non-technical decorative works, I think it works an absolute treat. Uh, you know, something so simple as a 1U switch tester just like that. I'm not going to say that it's worthwhile to try and do a thick plate for a keyboard, but something like this if you were to do a macro pad and it was only a thin piece of wood, like a one and a half mil, easy work. It would just cut through it, it would just chew through it. And of course, this is in lieu of, say, maybe having a laser cutter. Now, there's obviously a lot more mess with it, but there's a bit more versatility because, you know, you've got different materials and you don't have to worry about toxic fumes, you just have to worry about dust control. So if you set up a vacuum and you vacuum it as it's actually doing the cutting, then you probably won't have a problem with it whatsoever. So that pretty much, I think, uh, is as much as I want to do because I know some people kind of getting bored at seeing a whole bunch of CNC related videos, but I just wanted to finish that off because Banggood was so good to actually send me all this stuff in the first place and I felt really bad that I couldn't complete the review of these bits. Now, of course, I have a second set of bits, but like I said, originally I only asked for one or the other set because I only really needed one set to do this kind of work. So having two sets was a bit of a bonus. And everything else came together in the end and did what I was hoping and expecting it to do. So I want to say thank you, Banggood, for sending me this stuff to play with and review. I want to say thank you to all you guys who are watching this and your patience for hanging through. I want to say thank you to the two people, one who actually emailed me separately, uh, and the other person who commented in the previous video on the hack of using the hose clamp to fix my cracked spindle block holder. Uh, I love it because it's the only way that I was able to make this happen. And of course, if you're interested in all this kind of stuff, the video description on YouTube will have links so you can check it out yourself. And hey, you know, if you want to pick one up to play with, um, I would certainly appreciate you using those links because it just helps my uh, my relationship with Banggood so that they can continue to think about if they want to send me more stuff to play with and review. So there you go. There you have it. If you like this kind of stuff, please hit that like button. Um, smash that subscribe button if you're not subscribed before. Hit that bell button so that you know when we get new videos out on the YouTube. And of course, don't forget, we have a podcast series on mechanical keyboards, which we try and get an episode out for you every week. So that's it. Done. Dusted. I'm going to have to go clean up all of this mess before my wife and kid get home. So thanks very much again for checking out the video. And of course, until next time, happy clacking. <laughs>